All right, guys, so here's the review of the Vario 1918 trench watch. So I've actually had this one for quite a while. Apologies again, Vario, but I'm getting around to doing it now. Better late than never. And it is a really interesting piece as well. But we'll get into this as we get down into the review, because there's quite a lot going on. So we'll start with the packaging it comes in, and it is really nice. Do like this, really useful. It's got the Vario brand in there on the zip. And it's just a really nice hard case, which will protect the watch and you can use it for traveling and stuff. It's just handy, it's better than a useless box. And they do actually sell these separately as well if you want to pick one of them up. And again, they do multiple colors. Links down in the description for everything, as always. So we've got that little netted bit at the top there if you want to put in extra bits and pieces. We've got the cleaning cloth, which is branded. Then we've got the warranty card. Which has got that nice design on it, which is actually mirrored on the watch but we'll show you that later and it is signed and dated and as you can see i have actually had it since february 2022 sorry again about that varia so quickly show you the package in a little bit more detail and then we'll get right down to the watch so got a nice bit of cushioning on the bottom of there so again if you do want to pick these up link is down in the description if you want to buy it separately they also sell watch rolls as well but here's the actual watch so They've got a lot of different combinations available with this. So they do different dial colours, different strap colours, different case finishes as well. You can actually get a brass case if you don't want this 316L stainless steel one. They also offer different case sizes as well. The one I've got here is 37mm, but they also do it in 40 as well. So this is the first watch I've actually checked out with the bund strap. But if you're not keen on that, you can actually take this bund section off and just wear it like a normal kind of leather strap. So as I say, lots of different options, lots of different combinations. So you should be able to find one that you do like. Link will be down in the description if you want to check them all out. So before we go into this any further, let's go over the dimensions on this one first. So we've got a diameter of 37mm, as I said. Thickness of 11.6. Lug width of 18. And then the all important lug to lug is coming in at 44.7. In terms of the weight on this bun strap, it's coming in at 70 grams. And it is a really nice strap as well. So, as I say, this is the first button strap I've checked out. So, I wasn't entirely sure if I was going to like it or not when I tried it on. It's definitely something different. And also, because you've got that section underneath the actual case, it does add to the thickness a bit. So the thickness including that is about 14mm. But again, as I said, you can take that section off if you don't want to have that on there. And reduce that thickness a bit. When it comes to the buckle, we've got the Vario brand in there. Nicely finished brushing. And then, as I said, the strap is really nice. So again, that is branded with the Varia branding. Nicely done with the stitching. And it's just really soft, really supple, conforms to wrist nicely. Quickly show you the case back. And as I said, that's the same kind of design that you've got on the warranty card. It's a nice little touch that. Obviously a World War One soldier. And then we've got the usual specs around the outside. So automatic, sapphire crystal. And then we've also got the fact that it's stainless steel. This one, as I say, they do a brass one too. And then we've got that date at the top, that 11, 11, 1918. And then it's also a screw down case back. And you've probably also noticed we've actually got fixed lugs on this. So it's not going to be the easiest to switch out to different straps. But you can see we've got this screw here. So you can actually unscrew this strap. And then if you want to swap it out for a NATO or something, you can do that. But I personally really like this one. And I'm not the biggest fan of NATO straps, so I'm going to be keeping it on this. I might take the button section off at some point, but at the moment I'm quite liking that too. Flicking around to the side of the case, you can see we've got that signed crown there with the Vario logo again. And you can also see that really nice domed crystal as well. Do you like me a domed crystal, as you're probably aware. But the question is, is it actually sapphire? Let's find out now. Using the trusty diamond selector too. And yep, we have got sapphire crystal. So that is a really nice touch. Obviously the original kind of style watch this is based on wouldn't have had it. So I do appreciate they've upgraded that. You don't need to worry about it getting scratched. So now let's take a close look at that dial. And it is a really nice one. So it's actually enamel. So you get that nice deep black with this one. I'm assuming all of the dials are enamel, but again, you'll have to check the descriptions to make sure, because there are so many different variations. I'm not 100% sure on that. So it's fully printed, nothing applied. 
got that train track around the outside and then we've got that slightly sunken sub dial down at the 6 which is just cutting off the top of the 6 slightly on this 37mm version on the 40mm that isn't the case so if that bugs you you can go for the 40 instead it's all nicely printed no issues at all and then we've got that varia branding at the top just below the 12 when it comes to the hands we've got that nice little silver second hand on that sub dial and then the other ones are cathedral style hands again with that silver surround they are nicely finished again no issues there taking a closer look at the case you can see we've got that polished top section almost like a bezel which integrates nicely with that dome crystal the rest of the case is just brushed but it's nicely done and then with the crown we've got that polished end with the vario branding as i said earlier and it is an onion style crown nice and grippy so no problems with that and again it's just in keeping with the style of watch as well we've got the matching brushed hardware on the strap as well it's just a really nicely finished watch nicely put together so so far shaping up pretty nicely but you're probably wondering what's the loom like on this so let's check that out now and find out so we'll charge it up give it a proper chance and there we go so as you can see we've got c3 so the nice green glow but straight away you're probably going to notice there's a bit of a difference between the hands and the indices the hands are quite a bit brighter as you'd have expected with it being a fully printed dial so they just haven't got as much lean on there as they could have done if they'd had applied indices but in terms of consistency no issues there no patchiness or anything like that but the dial will fade before the hands do but if one is going to fade before the other that's definitely the way you round you want it when it comes to the hands obviously they're going to last a bit longer they're not going to be competing with a dive watch or anything like that so you're not going to be wowed by the loom on it but it's good enough you're not going to be overly disappointed with it as long as you go in expecting it to be okay loom it's it, it's okay it's nothing brilliant but it's nothing terrible so now you're probably wondering what movement is it that's powering all this no it's not an nh35 it's actually something a little bit different not something you see all that often it's the miyota 82 s5 so according to the listing this is the gilt movement not that you can actually see it with the solid case back but it does actually have hacking and hand winding as well as a 40 hour power reserve so if i just move this button section out of the way slightly which makes it a little bit easier to operate the crown so again nice and grippy as i said with it being that onion style just the one position no ghost date or anything so pop it out second hand stops as i mentioned you got hack in there then we can just change the time pop it back in second hand re-engages and then just the hand winding as i mentioned all works well no issues and then we can just screw it back down so the only real issue i do have with this movement is the fact that it's got quite a bit of rotor noise the same as the 8215 so this is why the miyota 8000 series movements aren't really my favorite but if that doesn't bother you too much it should be fine but it's something that needs to be mentioned because it is fairly audible so the question now is how much is all this going to cost you so it's 326 pounds which is about 396 dollars and that's about 373 euros so yeah it's not a cheap watch by any means but it's a really well made really nicely finished one i love that enamel dial the bun strap is something you don't see all that often and it's a really nice one as well really soft really supple nice and comfortable on your wrist and as i say there's so many different options in terms of dials case finishing strap colors so you should be able to find the perfect one for you and again if you really aren't keen on that button section you can remove that if you want and just wear it like a normal kind of leather strap so I do think they've catered to pretty much everyone who's going to like this kind of style of watch obviously if you're just not keen on this style then you either aren't watching this video at all or you definitely aren't this far in let's show you what it's like on wrist and then we'll wrap this up so here's what it looks like on my seven inch wrist and i do really like the way this looks it's just something totally different to what i'm usually wearing but i appreciate it, it probably isn't going to be to everyone's taste but I, as I say, it's really growing on me the more I wear it. One thing to mention, I've only got a few holes left on this. And as I say, I've got a 7 inch wrist. 
So if yours is much bigger than that, you probably want to go for the 40mm, and I'm assuming the strap with that will be slightly longer. But again, just check the information on the listings, and if it doesn't specifically say, then contact Vario and find out. The way it is with this, I think I probably could have got away with the 40 as well, but I decided to go for the 37 because those fixed lugs, I was a little bit worried it might have been slightly too big, but I think the 40 probably would have been all right. But let me know what you think. Do you think this looks all right on my 7 inch wrist, or do you think I should have gone for the 40 instead? Also, if you are interested in picking one of these up, what combination of dial and strap and everything would you go for? And also, would you be interested in going with a brass case? I was tempted myself, because I've never checked out a brass case watch before. I've tried out a few bronzes, but never brass. So, perhaps I should have gone for that. When it comes to things I'd change with this watch, there's only really a couple. Perhaps a slightly different movement that doesn't have that rotor noise, and maybe a little bit more AR. Other than that, I can't really fault it. For what it is, it's a really nice piece, really nicely done. But, that's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.